Hey, everybody, I'm Christian Johnson with CCM Magazine, and I'm so glad to have Philippa Hanna with me today. How are you doing? I am really good. Thank you, Christian. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And uh, we were talking about this uh, before we started the recording, though, but uh, you're actually officially my first international artist. So uh, this is a big first for me. So I'm excited to have you here. I am super honored to be your first international guest. Hopefully it'll be a good one and you'll want to do it again. Yeah, well, I, I'm I'm sure it will be. You've already been a, a pleasure to talk with. So, uh, so excited to talk with you and um, just want to get a little bit more information about your background. Um, I see that you actually grew up a part of a major musical family. So uh, what impact would you say that had on your career? And you can just tell us a little bit about uh, your family's history. Sure. So music is really all I've ever known. I remember being in the wings of theaters and sort of music clubs from being tiny, from being the same age as my daughter, maybe two or three years old. And my dad was a country folk musician. Um, he's Irish. And so he used to entertain huge crowds and he did comedy and um, just a super talented person. But he was actually born into a traveling show. Like that's how deep the showbiz runs in our family. He was born into a traveling show. So literally everybody in his family would travel around Ireland in like a fleet of caravans. Um, I don't think they're called caravans in the U S more. <laughs> um, you could say an RV or a trailer or something, you know, the kind that, that you I know. To. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so they traveled around Ireland. And so everybody from his generation onwards just was super musical. So from being a really, really tiny little kid, I was on stage with him um, getting pulled up in shows and and singing my heart out so that's where it started for me wow so you said you have a two-year-old daughter she, she's actually 21 months nearly so she, oh. she'll be two in january wow well congratulations to you um you you plan on bringing her into the music industry as well well there's no holding her back at the minute because yeah she can barely speak but she can sing almost all of the nursery rhymes that she likes to listen to. <laughs> and she sings in perfect rhythm. So I know she's got rhythm. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. Yeah, that's great. So, it, I guess it's in her blood. She can't help it, right? <laughs> yeah. And she loves to stage crash when we're sound checking. And she loves the music wherever we are. She's kind of loves to be in the thick of it at church. And yeah, I think she's a musical kid. I don't know if she's going to be uh, in the music industry, but we'll, we'll yeah. see. Okay. Well, cool. Cool. Well, I did see that you've actually gotten a chance to tour with some uh, great people in the industry, um, not even just on the gospel side of things, but tell us a bit, little bit about your background and, you know, who you've gotten a chance to work with. I think being a storyteller, it's taken me into lots of different situations, lots of different types of music venues. Mm. And so I would regularly tour in places like coffee shops and theaters and and I did a date in a theater in Sheffield near where I live. And it led me to Lionel Richie's promoter. <laughs> and <laughs> wow. he invited me on to Lionel Richie's tour. And that kind of, that tour ended up going to another tour and another tour. And um, <laughs> I feel like, although like I fully identify as a Christian artist, I'm really comfortable. I think because of how I was raised, mm. um, just among the people singing songs and sharing stories, I feel like I just feel super comfortable in those settings really just with everyday folk and for me it's a good opportunity to give them a window into the christian walk and what it's like to have god in your life at the center but once again we're here today to talk about a new ep that you have coming out for us and um you've actually um have the uh, stained glass podcast um that i, I saw um, and so I, I see that the EP is called uh, Stained Glass Stories Live from the Old Chapel. Um, so what is the theme here with the stained glass windows? Well, in the UK, we have some pretty beautiful, famous churches where there are these beautiful colored panes of glass all over. And I walked into one of these old churches just as I was finishing my last album. Um, and as I walked in there, it was the sun was setting and this kind of explosion of color just filled the room and covered wow. me. And I was just in awe of it. And I was looking at the pictures and I could see Jesus uh, with loaves and fishes. And I could see uh, pictures of a depiction of the crucifixion. And mm. so I remember asking the sort of the janitor, like, what's all this about? Why are these 
incredible stained glass pictures in the church. And he said, it's really about storytelling. So before people could write and read, uh, way, way, way back, um, when reading and writing was something that not everybody could do or very mm. few people could do. And it was a way of telling God's story. And so I got thinking about that and I thought, well, my favorite thing to do is tell God's story um, mm. through my own songs, through my own perspective, um, taking scripture. I just love storytelling. I think having grown up in a sort of country music background, storytelling just really captures me. Mm. So I was like, wow maybe my life is a bit like a stained glass story and maybe your life is like a stained glass story. And when we put it all together, it helps to glorify God and tell his story. Mm. Oh, wow. I think that's beautiful. Wow. Was it? Whew, that's good. Um, but uh, so tell us what should we expect from this EP actually um, with the songs and um, what, what are you trying to convey with the story that you're telling? So the album stained glass stories came out during the pandemic and uh, it was interesting because the songs, I know the songs were really helpful to people, but I always felt like I hadn't been able to share the songs publicly. I hadn't been able to tour. I hadn't been able to mm. connect with people live. And so when when all of that started to calm down and we could go out and play music again, I just had this burning desire to record some live versions of my favorite songs from the album. So mm. that's what we did. And we threw a brand new song in there as well. And I guess the... The overarching theme is that God is still good. He is still in charge. He still reigns. Um, he still has his hands all over the whole picture. Right. And even though right, life can be really unpredictable, there's been so much change for the for the whole globe, um, but also for me personally. I think it's been really important to just keep confessing that God hasn't changed. He's still good. He still loves me. Mm, that's so good. Um, thank you for that. Um, so would you say the pandemic had an effect on, I guess, the way you would have wanted to do the album originally? Would you have liked to have done it live? Uh, did it affect um, touring and anything uh, as far as your career um, that you you finally feel like you're getting to get back into now? Yeah, I feel like for me and I think for so many others, the pandemic came along at a time where things were flowing really well. Mm. Um, I just got signed after sort of 15 years in the music industry. I just got signed to a label and we made this record I was so proud of and loved the songs. And then just to find yourself in complete isolation. Mm. Um, and at that time, that's when I found out we were expecting our first child as well. It just felt like such an anticlimax and it mm. just felt like it didn't make any sense. But it's only since then I mean, now I'm going out on the road again, meeting people who said your record got me through those hard times and wow. clinging on to that message that God is still God helped me through the darkest days. Um, and so now I get it. I know that it didn't make sense to me at the time, but right. I feel like God knew what he was doing. Right. It, it didn't make sense career wise for you, but it worked out in the end because your music was able to help, help people through uh, such a such a trying time for all of us. Um, so uh, I, I think that's amazing. Um, but look, tell us when the album is coming out and where can they uh, get it and, and, you know, be a part of your ministry. Thank you so much for asking. So on the 21st of October, the EP will hit all of the streaming platforms. Uh, but there are a couple of singles already out on YouTube. So whether you're watching this before or after the 21st uh, or hearing it, you can find some of the stuff already on youtube just search my name philippa Hanna with one l and <laughs> two p's so it's a double p one l double p in philippa and no h on the end of hannah you can find me on all the socials that way as well um but yeah i would love for you to share in the moments we had um recording the ep live um so with live musicians it just felt really special i got my mm. best friends involved some of the best musicians i know and so I just really hope it blesses people. And, and maybe if they're still struggling, maybe it would help to remind them that God is still for them. All right. Well, before I let you go, tell us what's the one song that everybody needs to make sure to listen to if they're having a, the worst day of their life. What is that one song that you feel like is really going to pour into somebody? So the song You're Still God, mm. um, I think that's I think that's the sort of the anchor track of the of the past album and this live EP. You're Still God has been my anthem 
through the pandemic, through being a new mom in lockdown, um, sadly losing my mother-in-law, who was a close friend, we lost my mother-in-law in November. And just worshipping through that mm -hmm. with that message has really helped me. And so I really, really hope it blesses you too. Well, thank you for that. And so sorry for your loss. But um, as you said, God is he's always in control and we always can lean back on him. So uh, but once again, thank you for that transparent moment. And thank you for this transparent EP and album. Uh, so excited for everybody to go and check it out. Uh, but uh, once again, thank you so much, Philip and Hannah, for being here with me today. And uh, good luck on everything. And I'll be praying God's best for you. Thank you so much. And for you, too. I really appreciate you inviting me into your CCM moment world and yeah. i just love it so much so stay in touch absolutely absolutely thank you so much <laughs>